Hello and welcome to episode number 44 of Cooking Every Food in the Game. We have a big episode today. We are tackling Recipe for Disaster. Now if we check my quest log here, you can see that I have done this quest before. So I will not be able to cook every single item. I will have some clips later in the episode from a long-term viewer who I very much appreciate sent in clips of them cooking some of the foods. Uh, so thank you very much for that. Uh, and we will be doing the steps to obtain the ingredients as much as possible and describing then how you would cook it. So the first sub-quest we'll be tackling is freeing the mountain dwarf. You can see that we are just north of Tavoli, next to White Wolf Mountain here. And we'll be travelling under White Wolf Mountain to talk to a little stubborn dwarf named Rohak. Now, during the quest, you require the making of a dwarven rock cake. And you bring him the ingredients for one, a bucket of milk, a pot of flour, egg and a bowl of water. And he'll make one for you if you get him drunk enough. However, not with Asgarnian ales. You'll make Asgoldian ales. Right, so there we go. We've cooked an Asgoldian ale as you would part of the quest. If we talk to him here... Hello, mate. Give us another rock cake, please. Yes, I would like another one. 100 coins. No worries, mate. So you see, he'll get to work here on the little fire. He won't consume our ingredients here because that was part of the quest, but he will produce another one for us. And he puts it on the table, and we can see that it is slightly different coloured to what you would expect the Dwarven Rock Cake if you've seen one of those before. So if we wield our ice gloves, we can pick it up and cool it down. Excellent. There we go. Dwarven Rock Cake. One of the only foods in the game that will actually do damage to you when you eat it. So useful for things like Dar Rocking. Right, so that's basically part of the freeing the Mountain Dwarf subquest. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, next we find ourselves in the Goblin Camp north of Falador. I'm sure if we've done Goblin Diplomacy, we know where this is. And you are freeing the Goblin Generals as part of the Recipe for Disaster quest. What we do is we come into the Goblin Village and go down the ladder here to talk to the Goblin Cook. You can see the room is destroyed. There's a hilarious cutscene during the quest where you add charcoal to his cauldron and it blows up. Now the food that you're after from the Goblin Cook is the Slop of Compromise, as typically the Goblin Generals are arguing about something or other, as always. And we need to bring him three ingredients. The first we can make by adding a bucket of water to bread to obtain soggy bread. The next you can use gnome or human spice on fishing bait to obtain spicy maggots. The next you will take either purple, blue or green dye use that on an orange slice which I forgot to bring my knife so I will be back momentarily okay we have obtained our knife I could have just you know gone to the bank got the knife out and cut it there but for the sake of aesthetics we're back here with the goblin cook let's use our knife on the orange into slices and then we use our dye on the orange slices to get dyed orange perfect so those are the three ingredients you would give the Goblin Cook to obtain the Slop of Compromise. Okay, let's move on to the next subquest. Okay, so the next subquest we're going to tackle is Freeing Pirate Pete. We are currently in Port Gazard, just uh, south of Ardoin. And we need to don our fishbowl helmet and our diving apparatus and talk to Murphy. Ah, we don't want a sextant, mate but all right. We want to go diving. Yes. Let's go. All right, and we're underwater. Swimming around in our fishbowl helmet. We are first going to pick some kelp. There we go. Now, what we're gathering here is ingredients to ultimately make a fish cake. We need kelp, and we're also going to need some crab meat from those guys over there. But we cannot enter the crab pen until we first go and pick up some rocks. 
because we can't just swim above the crabs and take them out. No, no, no. Pick up rocks, enough of them so it will weigh us down, and then we'll be able to be on our feet and take on the crabs like normal. So we're going to need five of these. And that's five. Okay, let's go back over to the pen. Normally it's a bit more involved uh, to do this process, but we've been here before, so we know exactly what to do. Don't have to gain access to the pen or anything like that. We can just waltz straight in. Awesome. You can see now we sink to our feet. Take on this big fat one here. Bring it, mate. Am I finally going to get this strength level? This has been going on the whole series. Just under 200 XP left and 94. Okay, and we'll take some crab meat. Excellent. Alright, so we've got all the ingredients we'll need to make our fish cake. Let's just teleport straight out of here. Back to our favourite kitchen. And we'll don our typical cooking gear yet again. Right, so the first thing that we're going to need to make a fish cake is cutting our knife into breadcrumbs. Next we'll use our pestle and mortar on our raw cod to get ground cod. We'll also need to grind our kelp to get ground kelp. And we'll also need to grind our crab meat to get ground crab meat. Right, so if we use all these ingredients together, you see they form a nice raw fish cake. We use that on our favourite range and cook it. We get a cooked fish cake. Beautiful. So we're able to cook the entire thing there to free Pirate Pete. Let's move on to the next subquest. Okay, and so the next subquest we would be aiming to free the Lumbridge Guide. Now for this quest we simply come to Wizard Treyborn here in the Wizard's Tower and we use a pot of flour, a milk and an egg with him to get these all enchanted. He'll give us a short quiz, a general question about runescape and a memory test. If we can do that, we prove ourselves worthy and he enchants our ingredients so we could go back to our favourite kitchen and combine them on our range to make the elusive Cake of Guidance. But unfortunately we can't make that outside of our quest, so on to the next subquest. Okay, the next subquest brings us to Edgeville. And we are currently in Evil Dave's mum's house, Doris. And if we go down into the basement, we will indeed find Evil Dave. So this subquest is from Freeing Evil Dave. And you come to this basement and take on these many hell rats with a cat of some kind. And when you do so, you obtain spice. So what I'm going to do is actually take uh, take on this Hellrat Behemoth with my Wily Hellcat and obtain the orange spice that it's guarding. Right, so essentially our Hellcat takes on the Hellrat Behemoth. We can feed it uh, fish through the curtain if it starts getting damaged. And once this Hellrat Behemoth is defeated, we will obtain the orange spice. There is orange, red, yellow, and brown spice. And post-quest, which we will see once I obtain it, it is used to boost your skills. Depending on the colour of the spice, it will boost different skills. Uh, but during the quest, you will have to obtain multiple different coloured spices and put the right proportions of each spice into the stew uh, in order to free Evil Dave. There we go, our wily Hellcat has absolutely demolished the Hellrat Behemoth. And I'll just get, show you an example of what you can do post subquest. We can add orange spice to our spicy stew. This is very helpful when doing challenges for things like clue scrolls or achievement diaries. So we can see the list of options there for the orange spicy stew. So we drink that. So that I get a 5 boost. No. You can see it's. In the top left here, we have increased some stats, decreased some stats. But yeah, very handy to come and do this. Um, and that is how you free Evil Dave. Let's move on to the next subquest. While standing in Evil Dave's mum's house here, I am going to cheat just a little bit and refer you to my Cooking Chompy and Jubbly Birds episode, which I will link in the description for you to check out which you do as part of the subquest freeing Skrark Uglogwi. 
I've probably butchered that pronunciation, but I go into a lot more depth into how to cook chompies and how to cook jubblies uh, in that video, so please go check that out. Let's move on to the next one. Our next subquest involving the freeing of ceramic vase, get it, ceramic vase, starts in the Karazi jungle. We've just hacked our way through these jungle bushes, um, taint and logs, I guess. And we are here to pick some vanilla pods, as to free ceramic vase you need to make a brulee, creme brulee. Uh, it involves a bit of a boss fight as well, which I do not think we'll be able to do. Oh, can you not though? Stupid wolf. Uh, we'll run, I think it's over here somewhere. Here we are, we've got some vanilla plants here. Alright, so what we do first of all is mix our bucket of milk with our pot of cream to obtain a milky mixture. You're always interrupting me, Captain Arnav. Get out of here, mate. Then we'll add our pot of corn flour, which you obtain in the same way you would a pot of flour through the flour mill. However, instead of grain at the top of it, you add in raw sweet corn. So we'll add that to our milky mixture and obtain a corn flour mixture. Then we'll need our vanilla plant. Pick that for a vanilla pod. Just add the extra bit on there and you see we obtain a brulee. Now I've also brought a raw chicken here just to test if we can get to where we take on the bosses. And you actually take on the evil chicken and a black dragon. From the evil chicken you'll obtain a special egg that you will add to the brulee. Uh, and from the black dragon it will give you a token which summons a click which will flambe your brulee for you. Again that will require ice gloves but I'm thinking if I use the raw chicken on this chicken shrine, nothing will happen. Oh! Well, I guess we do get to fight them. Learn something new every day, don't you? I guess I'll go gear up and I'll come back. Okay, we're back. We've got some gear. Obviously, I had to keep our chef's hat. Let's use the raw chicken on the chicken shrine and go through. Excellent. Now, ah, we better attack this thing first then. We've got some big black dragons in here. And we'll see if they drop the thing we need. There we go. 94 strength, baby. That level has been coming this entire cooking series. How good. Excellent. There we go. Alright, let's see if it actually drops what we want. No, it does not. Well, what we wanted it to drop was a token. Uh, if we run north here... Uh, clearly there is a nest here, but I see no evil chicken. Well, that's unfortunate, isn't it? Okay, so it looks like we can re-enter the lair here. However, we would slay the evil chicken here, collect the egg, add that to our brulee, cut a draymond branch to obtain some cinnamon, put that into the brulee, and with the token the dragon should have dropped, it summons a fairy dragon by the name of Click, to flambe our brulee for us. So unfortunately we will not be able to finish this one. So I guess let's get out of here and move on to the next subquest. So for our next and final subquest we will be freeing King Owoge from Abatol. Uh, I'm in the Grand Tree right now as we need to go to Crash Island. Unfortunately we will not be able to do this one completely either but I'll show you at least a little bit of it. Right, so we'll talk to Dayro, travel with him, he'll take us to the air hangar and old waiter will crash us into Crash Island. Fantastic. Gonna wield at least just a whip and drink an anti-poison for this. You'll see why. So we run east. I'll chuck on Prey Melee now. And I will go down into this pit. Yep, I'm hard as nails. Hello, bulk snakes. Alright, so let's moose this one. And it will drop us its corpse. And that will be the thing you stuff uh, with certain ingredients that we'll see on Apatol. That will free King Awoage. There we go. Okay, so we can take a snake corpse. Uh, let's get out of here. And this time take the gnome glider to get to Apatol. There we go. We don't want to talk to him. We want to glide to Apatol. Perfect. Okay, now what we can do here... Even though we can wield our Gorilla Grigri and come over to the wonderful red banana tree. 
as this is one of the ingredients, sliced up red bananas to put into the stuffed snake. Uh, even if we had a rope and used it on that, you will get a chat message saying that we've already served the king his meal and we cannot get it anymore. The same thing goes for our ninja monkey Grigri. If we go into the course, we have no need to pick the monkey nuts. And so therefore, I instead am going to pass you off here to some clips of a long-term viewer doing that process for us. I'm also including some clips from some previous quests, including the fishing contest and the tourist trap. Uh, and he's also helped out previously with the monkfish in the Swan Song quest. So that is in that prior episode, which I'll link in the description. So once again, thanks very much for submitting those clips. And that's all from me, so I'll do the outro now. Thanks for watching. We've got a few great episodes coming up, but until then, I'll see you next time. Okay, here we have our friend as the gorilla, roping down some red banana. Then he's off on the agility course as the ninja monkey, going down this hole here and obtaining some monkey nuts. My man loves the quest helper. Got to respect it. I've never used it. He slices the red banana here and stuffs the snake with both of them. Crosses the lava and he's even got a chef's delight, God bless him. Uses the stuffed snake and cooks it. Love that. Then here he is fishing for some giant carp and even cooking it in our favourite kitchen. Love that from him. And finally, slicing up some pineapple rings from the Tenti Pineapple.